right, well, this morning we're going to be continuing in our series called Follow Me, What It Means to Follow Jesus. And so today we're going to be talking about something that, that's kind of been on my heart this, this week and, and over about the last week and a half. And uh, I can't say that I initially planned for us to, to be in this passage today, um, but I just can't shake that I believe this is where God wants us to be today uh, in this series. And we're going to be talking about, as we follow Jesus, part of that is learning to give our burdens to Jesus. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today is giving our burdens to Jesus. And so uh, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 11 uh, in verses 28 through 30 today. And as you're finding your place there, I want to share with you this story um, that happened in 2018. There was a, in a Connecticut hospital, there was a group of 12 surgeons that worked for five hours to remove a tumor from the abdomen of a 38-year-old woman. That may sound like a lot of doctors and a long time for a single tumor until you learn that that single tumor weighed 132 pounds. The patient reported that prior to the surgery, the tumor had grown at a rate of 10 pounds per week. That's 40 pounds a month. Ovarian mucinous tumors tend to be big, Dr. Vagen Andekin, who was the lead surgeon on the team, said. But tumors this big are exceedingly rare in the literature. He says, it may be in the top 10 or 20 tumors of this size removed worldwide. The tumor was technically benign, but it was so far from harmless. According to Dr. Andekin, the patient couldn't walk. She was malnourished because she'd been unable to eat, and she was at extreme danger for blood clots and other blood vessel-related damage. Her life was in jeopardy. When I first walked into the examination room, I saw fear in the patient's eyes, Dr. Andekin said. She was so hopeless because she had been to several other doctors and they were unable to help her. Can you imagine going about your day with a 132-pound weight dragging you down from the inside? Can you imagine the, the pressure that must have been built up in and around that poor woman? The squeezing, the maddening, crushing pressure that she was feeling every single day. But then, can you also imagine what it must have felt like the very day after surgery? Can you imagine what it would have felt like and the change that would have taken place after a 132 pound weight had been removed? She's back to normal life. She's back to work, the doctor said. And when I saw her in my office, I saw smiles. I saw hope. And I saw a happy woman who was back to her normal life and her family. Wouldn't you like to experience the same kind of joy that this lady experienced? Thinking about losing a 132-pound weight she'd been carrying around. And yet, think about the, the freedom that she now feels after dropping that burden and that weight. Think about that kind of freedom. And when we think about it, it sounds wonderful. That sounds amazing to, to think that, that we could be free of that. And the doctor goes on to say, he says, think about experiencing that. He says, and believe me, it's as wonderful as it sounds. I share that story to illustrate the point that we're going to talk about today when we think about giving our burdens to Jesus. And it's this. There are many of us in this room right now and watching online today that we are carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders when we walk into this building or when we turned on to watch the live stream. There are many of us today that we are carrying the weight of the world and we're feeling it. We are feeling the stress of carrying that weight. And, and we've talked about a lot over the last couple of years how the, the last few years have been tough on all of us. We all have been carrying a lot of weight and a lot of baggage and a lot of burdens that we've not had to deal with up until the last couple of years. Uh, you know, we didn't ever have to, to think about, you know, when we started getting the sniffles, could it be COVID? Before, we just thought, hey, I'm getting a cold or maybe I'm something. And now, like, if we start coughing or we start feeling bad, I don't know about you, but my mind starts thinking, oh, man, man, I hope it ain't COVID. I hope, you know, and we start thinking things like that. But then we, <clears throat> we also... Not only are carrying those burdens, but we've been carrying the, the burden around of, of, of the strain that it's put on our entire culture and our entire country over the last couple of years. 
And then many of us, we've, we've brought that even closer to home that we're carrying the weight of, of maybe job security or we're carrying the weight of maybe we're one of them that works in, in retail or we're one of the people that works uh, in these industries that have been affected in so many ways. But then many of us are just carrying burdens today that nobody outside of ourselves and Jesus know about because he knows our hearts. Maybe we've not verbally told him, but he knows because he already knows what's inside of our hearts. He knows our thoughts. He knows who we really are. And I just want to say there are so many of us today, whether it be in this room or online, that we are literally carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders today. And I want us to know that we were not designed and created by God to carry that kind of weight. God did not design and create us for us to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. We were not built that way. We are not built for that. <clears throat> in fact, we were built and created in such a way that, that we give the weight of the world that we feel to Jesus. And we give him the burdens of our hearts. And we cast our cares on him. And that's going to bring us to our text that we're going to jump into today. <clears throat> and I'm sure most of us have, have heard this. And this is a very familiar passage of scripture to us. And sometimes familiarity with something causes us to take it for granted. And it causes us to not look and see things that we normally might see because we think, well, yeah, I've read that before. I'm familiar with that passage and I've heard that all my life. But yet, familiarity can bring us to a place to where we get dull and our, and our spirit is dull to what the Holy Spirit wants to say to us through that passage. And so I pray today that we will approach this text with fresh eyes fresh minds and a fresh heart towards what Jesus wants to say to us here today. So let's begin reading in verse number 28 of Matthew chapter 11. The word of the Lord says this, then Jesus said, come to me all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Now, before we jump into to working our way through this, just a little bit of background. Jesus has just finished addressing a crowd, and in fact, <clears throat> he just gets done kind of giving them a, a verbal beating uh, about an unresponsive generation and talking about how uh, these people had the works been done in front of places like Tyre and Sidon and these works been done in places like Sodom. He says those places would have repented. They would have responded. And he even goes on to say that it's going to be more tolerable in the days of judgment for those places than it will be this unresponsive generation, which is basically the religious leaders that Jesus is having this conversation with. And so then he comes to the place where he talks about knowledge and he talks about rest. Because we're going to see in just a little bit, the religious leaders of that day, they had leveled, and I mean leveled, huge burdens that they were placing upon the people of Israel. They were mounting stuff on top of them and just kept piling it on and adding to the weight that they were trying to carry. Can you imagine? They already had the weight on them of trying to live out the law, which their reaction to that was completely wrong. When God gave them the law at Mount Sinai, their reaction should have never been like, okay, we can do this. And they kind of lived their lives as if they could keep the law. I don't know about you, but when I read the law, my response is, man, I am in trouble. Or as they would say, I'm up a creek without a paddle. Like I, I'm just... I'm hopeless. I, I can't do that because I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I'm not perfect. Maybe, you know, I, we've all probably met some people that thought they were, but I'm not perfect and I can't keep the law and you can't keep the law. And, and so they already had the burden that they were living under of trying to keep something that was impossible to keep. And then we're going to see that the religious leaders just heaped more and more on top of them. And that brings them to the place where Jesus gives this statement in this invitation when he says, come to me. And so let's jump in today and let's work our way through this passage of these few verses. And let's see what it looks like to cast our burdens on Jesus. To give our cares to Jesus. 
Number one is this. Jesus invites those that carry heavy burdens to come to him. The invitation is given. It says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. He says, come to me. So notice what he's not saying. Jesus is not inviting those who feel righteous or feel worthy. Jesus is not inviting those who think they have it together. He's not inviting those who feel spiritual. Jesus' invitation, he says, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. If you ever, you know what weary is, it's, you know, when you're carrying something or you're, you're dealing with something, weary is you, you get to the place, you're just beat down by it. You know, there are things that we all carry in our lives that, <clears throat> let's just be honest, maybe it's a wayward child, maybe it's someone in, in, our, in our family that's struggling with, with addiction and, and it's bleeding into our lives, maybe it's somebody that struggles with, um, you know, with anxiety and, and depression and, and, and things like that, and, and they're weary. It's just beating them down. Every single one of us have faced something in our lives. It could be cancer. It could be the loss of a loved one. And let's just be honest. The weight of dealing with that and carrying that, it just beats you down to the point. It's like you're just tired. You're tired, and you're just like, I don't know that I have the energy to keep going on. When you're weary, you, you've come to the end of your rope almost. It's the end of yourself. And Jesus is saying, come to me, all of you who are weary. He's saying, if you've gotten to the end of yourself, if you feel like, I don't know if I can handle this anymore. I don't even know if I can continue to live like this at all. Jesus is saying, you are the very one that I want to come to me. And so it's not for someone who feels righteous. It's not even for someone who feels worthy. And if you think you're worthy, you're not ready to follow Jesus. If you think that you're righteous on your own, you're not ready to follow Jesus because Jesus' invitation is to those of us who realize that without him, we're utterly ho hopeless. We have no other hope. He's not appealing to those who somehow think they've got it all together because that's not his invitation. And somehow, I don't know when this changed, but somehow in American Christianity, we've given the lost, unbelieving world the idea that they have to get their stuff together before they can come to Jesus and how they need to fix all of their problems. And then it's kind of like, well, if someone's a drunk, you know, quit drinking and come to Jesus. If they're a drug addict, well, give up the addiction and come to Jesus. If they have a pornography addiction, well, you got to get clean of the porn addiction and then come to Jesus. No, Jesus says, come to me. And Jesus is inviting people to come and Jesus will take care of those things. So he's inviting those that feel a load on their heart those that want to be free of this load they're carrying. He's saying, if you feel like you're carrying a heavy weight today, that's the one, he's like, that's who I'm talking to. That's who I'm inviting. So if, if you're feeling the load on your heart of maybe it's anxiety, maybe you're feeling the load on your heart of sorrow, maybe it's even the load of sin on your heart, Jesus is saying, you are the very one that I'm inviting to come follow me. You're the very one that I'm inviting to come and experience life that I want to give. I love what Pastor Johnny Hunt says about unconfessed sin. He says, unconfessed sin is a terrible, heavy burden to carry. And so if we have sin in our heart and in our life that we're carrying around, that we've not given to Jesus, that we've not confessed to him, it is a terrible burden to carry. In fact, Dave, <clears throat> David in the Psalms pins the words that, and he's talking about his sin to the point that it, it basically zaps the strength and the life out of his body. And I'm paraphrasing. But he talks about like his strength melting away because of the weight of his sin. And so if we have sin that we're, we're carrying around, that's a terrible, heavy burden to bear. But whether it's sin or it's some other burden that we're carrying, it doesn't matter what that burden is. It doesn't matter what that weight is. You and I need to learn to open up to someone because opening up to someone about what we're dealing with will help us to lighten the weight of our burden. Sharing that burden with someone else and opening up to them will help us lighten the weight of that. Because why? Because then we're not trying to carry it all on our own. Because then we've got someone that can help bear the weight of that burden with us. And so that's exactly what Jesus is saying Come to me, all you that are weary and carry heavy burdens. And Jesus is saying, come to me. And 
Brother, it's opening up to, to Jesus himself. And like I said, he already knows whether you open up or not. But there's something about it when we just confess and we pour that out to Jesus. Whether it's opening up to him or maybe it's even opening up to another brother or sister in Christ and saying, you know, I've really been dealing with this. I haven't told anybody, but this is really something that I've been dealing with in my life. That helps us to lighten the load of the weight. And so those are the people that Jesus is inviting. He's saying, if you're weary and you carry a heavy burden, you are the one I want to come. Come to me. And so I want you to know today, whether you're here in person or you're online, Jesus is not saying to you, get it together and then approach me. No, Jesus is saying, approach me and I'm going to take care of helping you get it together. And, and he's saying, I want you to come and bring that burden to me. Number two, not only does Jesus invite those that carry heavy burdens to come to him, the second thing, Jesus promises to give us rest from the burdens that are weighing us down. Jesus promises to give us rest from the burdens that are weighing us down. Now, this is extremely contrary to the culture that we live in. Our world that we all live in is completely different than this. Our experience in the world is so opposite of what Jesus is saying. What's our experience we face in the world? It's not rest from our burdens that are weighing us down. Our experience is hurry. We're in, we're in a hurry to, to, to get everywhere. There was an old country song years ago, and I'm not a country music fan by no means, but it sticks out in my mind when I think about that. It was an Alabama song in the 90s. I'm in a hurry, and I don't know why. We all live in a culture that we're in a hurry, and we have no clue why we are in a hurry. But we live in a society of constant hurriedness. We, we experience in this world aggravation, failure, disappointment, and anxiety. These are all part of our everyday lives in the world that we find ourselves living in. I, I don't know about you, but I resonate with that. Hurry, aggravation, failure, disappointment, anxiety, that, that describes like just a normal week for most of us if we're being real. And so that is completely contrary to what Jesus is saying. That's completely contrary to his invitation and his call. He says, come unto me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. He says, and I will give you rest. Jesus gives us rest built on this one reality and truth. And that, that rest that Jesus promises is built on this one foundation. And it's the foundation that our sins are forgiven if we are in Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 1, therefore there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. This is the foundation and the basis for us being able to have true rest. Because the person who is not in Christ, there's no way they can have rest. There's no way they can have peace. And there's no way that they can feel free from the weight of the burden they carry. And so the basis for the rest that Jesus offers and extends is built and grounded in the truth of responding to the gospel, of, of responding to who Jesus is and what Jesus did on the cross. When we respond in repentance and faith and we believe the gospel and we believe that Jesus died for us and we believe that he paid the penalty for our sins and we by faith place our trust in that finished work, that is the basis for truly having rest. Because here's the thing, we were talking about this, uh, you know, before. Let's just be honest, the world around us, it, it's kind of a messed up place. And the world around us, it, it weighs us down. But even in the midst of things that are going on right now, we can truly have rest in Jesus. Because Jesus is our rest. Because we know that this, for us, as believers, is the worst it will ever get. It will never get any worse than what we face in this life. And that we know that at some point... In eternity, when we stand before Jesus, it says that, that God will wipe away all tears. There will be no more pain. There will be no more suffering. There will be no more death. That will all be gone. And so this is the worst that it gets. So Jesus is saying, I give you rest, but it is built on the fact that our sins are forgiven. That has to be the basis for it. And, and if that's not the basis, then it's impossible for you and I to truly experience rest. But also when Jesus promises to give us rest from the things that, that burden us, the things that weigh us down, here's the thing that we have to understand. You and I, we can't experience rest.
from what we're not willing to surrender to Jesus. We cannot experience rest from what we're not willing to surrender to Jesus. Whether it's an addiction that's weighing us down, whether it's anxiety that's weighing us down, whether it's a sin in our life that's weighing us down, may, I mean, whatever it may be, fill in the blank, because all of us have something different that we're struggling with in our lives. But you and I can't truly experience rest from those things if we're not willing to surrender them to Jesus. Here's what I think happens for most of us, and I don't know about anybody else, but I'm going to speak for myself that I know I'm guilty of. When I think about things that weigh me down, when I think about things that, that truly burden my heart and my mind and the things that occupy my, my thoughts and cause me to be anxious and cause me to, to get depressed and worry and things, those things, what generally happens, the reason why I don't really experience rest from them is because I've never truly surrendered them to Jesus. So what happens is, I kind of, in a superficial moment, I acknowledge, yes, this is something happening in my heart and in my life or maybe in my mind. And I'm like, okay, Lord, here, you know, I'll confess it and maybe I even tell Jesus about it. And what happens is instead of leaving it with him, I pick it back up and take it with me when I'm done. And, and, and I've seen, like a lot of people, you know, old school, how we used to, like a lot of people, you know, and there's nothing wrong if you still want to do this or if you don't, it's up to you. You know, if when people would come and respond during invitations at the altar and things like that, and they would, they would, you know, cast their cares on the Lord in that moment. So many people, they came down front with a heavy burden. They prayed about it. But then when they got up, they carried it right back to their seat with them. And I'm afraid that many of us, that, that's how we operate in our prayer life when we're praying and when we're, we're communing with Christ is, yes, we're telling him about these things, but yet we're not leaving them with him and we're not casting them on to Jesus. And we're not really truly surrendering and giving it up and <clears throat> just saying, Lord, I'm going to give you this burden. Because most of the time, here's what happens, and, and I'm going to use something very simple, but it's just something we're worrying about. Maybe I'm worried about my, my finances. And instead of me praying about it and saying, okay, Lord, you know what? I just completely trust you. I'm giving this to you. What happens is I say, okay, Lord, I need you to meet our needs this month. But then I spend the whole month worrying about it. And I'm not truly surrendered that burden to Jesus. And so what happens is I don't have rest from it because even though I'm asking God, God, meet my need, God, take care of me. I'm still saying, oh man, I'm looking at the checkbook this month. Oh golly, that don't look good. And man, that bill came in and and Lord, how, I don't know how this is going to work. And, you know, that's not truly surrendering that to Jesus. And so you and I cannot experience rest from what we're unwilling to surrender to Jesus. Let me give you the third thing. Number three, <clears throat> Jesus invites us to learn his ways and experience life with him. Jesus invites us to learn his ways and experience life with him. Notice what he says. It's come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. He says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. He says, let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle at heart. And he says, and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. And when he says, take my yoke upon you, He's not talking about the yoke of an egg or, or anything like that. So in the, the first century, in biblical times when this is being written and when this is actually happening, the people reading that would have clearly understood what Jesus meant when he says, take my yoke upon you. If you've ever had any experience farming, um, you understand this as well. So a yoke was something that they would put on oxen, and it would actually tie like more than one ox together. So you would have an ox here and then an ox here, and you had a yoke that went on them. And, and it was kind of like a thing that you put around their head and it bound them together. And so like you would do that to a team of oxen. And you, had heard, you ever heard the term of yoke, a yoke of oxen? Well, that's what it's talking about. They're yoked together. They're, they're bound together. And so what happens is, is they're plowing and they're pulling one ox by himself trying to pull cannot do as much as three or four together can. And so you're distributing the weight of that load and that, that burden. And Jesus is saying, he's saying, take my yoke upon you. He's saying, and, and when he's talking about his yoke, he's saying literally, he says, let me teach you and take my yoke. You're not going to be in this alone anymore. Jesus is saying, when you come to me and you bring the burden to me and you truly surrender it to me and lay it at my feet, He's saying, I'm going to be there with you, 
and we're going to be bonded together. We're going to be yoked up together. And it's not going to be you carrying that burden. It's going to be you and me together. And Jesus is with us. I love that poem. It's, it's not in scripture, but there's a poem that is so often recited. It's called Footprints in the Sand. And a lot of times we see it at funerals and on the back of the, the, the little cards and the little pamphlets you get at funerals. And it talks about, I don't remember exactly how it goes, but it talks about, you know, only seeing one set of footprints in the sand and, and the person asking the Lord about it. And he says, well, when you saw the one set, it's because I was carrying you. And, and, and I think about that in this moment when Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Jesus is inviting us to yoke up with him. And he's saying, I'm going to carry your burden. Give it to me. Let me teach you my ways because I am humble and gentle in heart. And so Jesus imposes no unrealistic expectation. He does not expect us to obey, to do some kind of work first, nor does he even assess how deserving we are. Jesus imposes no unrealistic expectation of us like a lot of people do. Let's just be real. People have unrealistic expectations of everybody but themselves in our culture. And, and they place these really heavy burdens upon us. He does not expect us to do any kind of work first to approach him. And nor does he assess us and look at us and say, well, let me see how deserving you really are. You know, it, it's kind of like, he's not like Santa. He doesn't look at his list and see how good we've been to determine what we get for Christmas that year. Jesus looks at us. And he says, come unto me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. He's inviting us to hand those over to him. And he's saying, I'm going to yoke up with you. Take my yoke because I am gentle and humble. See, what the religious leaders of the day, they were imposing heavy burdens on the people. They were adding all sorts of extra things to the law. In fact, there were like 600, the law was like 613 different commands that made it up. Well, what they were doing is they were taking all those 613 things and they're saying, oh, well, wait a minute. We, you know, so we don't break the law. They would kind of call it like what we might call a standard. It would be like, hey, we're going to set this guardrail, you know, so if, hey, here's the line. I don't want to, like, if I were to walk over here and I kept walking, I would fall. They would say, well, so I don't get too close to the edge. I tell you what, I'm going to put like a little barrier here. And that way I don't go any further than here. So I know if I don't go any further than here, there's no way I'm going to walk off. Well, the problem with that was it sounds good in theory, but they were putting all of this extra heavy burden on the people. And, and they were weighing them down with all these ridiculous things they were making them do. And, and so we see that that's what they were doing. And, and we still see this being done today in much of American Christianity, that we heap burdens upon people that Jesus never, ever did. We see that, that we, you know, we're, we're making people feel the weight of something that Jesus never intended for them to feel the weight of. And what I mean by that is here's what we do in American Christianity a lot. We tell people that salvation is by grace alone, in, through faith alone, in Jesus alone. But then we put the impossible burden of achieving sanctification on themselves, on their own efforts. We say, yes, salvation is completely by faith in Jesus. It's a work of grace. There's nothing you can do to deserve it, earn it. It's all by faith. And then we say there's nothing else you can do to be saved except believe in the gospel and believe in the work of Jesus on the cross. And we say there's nothing you can do to be saved. But yet then we try to make people think that somehow it's their own efforts that sanctify them. That's not the way it works. That's a heavy burden that we place on people that they cannot bear. Because I want to say that your sanctification, you are not going to accomplish that in your own power. It is the Holy Spirit living in you and through you that helps that be accomplished. And in fact, if you're trying to be sanctified in your own strength, I, I hate to tell you, it's going to be a miserable way to go. And Jared Wilson, he talks about this in his book, The Imperfect Disciple. Uh, if you've never read that, I would highly recommend that book. He says, making your entire Christian life about trying to look like a good Christian is a great way to become a terrible Christian, or at least a weak and defeated one. You know why so many of us are weak and we're carrying heavy burdens and we're just weary? Because we're making our life about trying to look like a good Christian. We're making our life about trying to look the part and trying to do things in our own strength instead of relying on the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to accomplish them through us. 
And so what happens is we become a weak and defeated Christian because we're bearing a weight that we were not intended to bear. And so experiencing rest and true life change through Jesus means this. It means you and I must quit trying to live up to an impossible standard. I said this a few weeks ago uh, when we were in the Eastern Perspective series. We've got to quit trying to measure up to a standard because Jesus already met the standard. God will not accept us any more than he already has because he cannot accept Jesus any more than he already does. Quit trying to live up to an impossible standard is what Jesus is saying to us. And so if we're going to experience true life change and true rest, we've got to quit trying to live up to this impossible standard. We've got to quit trying to, to just look the part. And we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts and through us. The only way for you and I to truly follow Jesus and live the life that he calls us to live is through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Meaning that, that we're not going to do it on our own. When we see things and we're like, okay, well, I need to do better. And, and we think that because that's the way our, our minds work. We say, well, I need to do better praying. I need to do better reading my Bible. I need to do better being faithful to the worship gathering. I need to do better to serving. I need to do better for this. And we look at it as a checklist. I need to do this. The only way you're ever going to do anything is through the power of the Holy Spirit. The only way I'm going to love people like Jesus loves me is through the Holy Spirit doing it through me because I can't in my own strength do that. And so we've got to quit living, trying to live up to this impossible standard. And so Jesus invites us to learn his ways and to experience life with him. He says, I am gentle and humble at heart. And he tells us, he says, you will find rest for your souls when you do this. Because he says, my yoke is easy to bear. Why is his yoke easy to bear? Because he's the one that's bearing the weight of the yoke. And the burden I give you is light. So unlike the religious leaders who were giving people heavy burdens, and I mean just putting bone crushing and, and life crushing weight on them, Jesus is saying, I'm not going to put that kind of weight on you. He said, the burden I give you he said, it's going to be light. You can bear it. Why? Because it's not up to us. It's the Holy Spirit empowering us and living in us and through us. So let, let's, let's wrap up today as we think about this. If you and I are ever going to truly follow Jesus, there's going to be a cross for us to carry. There are going to be trials that we're going to face. And we're going, we will have battles to fight. Make no mistake about that. If we're truly going to follow Jesus, there is going to be a cross that we're going to have to bear, that we're going to have to carry. There's going to be trials that we're going to face, and we're going to have battles that we have to fight. It's not going to be all roses. I, I, I promise you that. Anyone who says when you come to Jesus, your, your problems go away, and everything's rosy and peachy, they're lying to you. They are not telling you the truth. You are still going to have sorrow just like everyone else has sorrow. You're still going to fight battles. Guess what? You're still going to fight with your flesh. Probably even more so the more you determine to follow Jesus. You're going to face trials. There are just going to be things that are going to be in your life that you're going to have to deal with. So I just want to make sure that we're being clear that, that we're not preaching today and saying that by giving your burdens to Jesus that every, that's going to make everything better. And, and, and I'm not even saying that when you come and you literally cast your burden on Jesus and you surrender it to him that immediately life is going to change on a dime like that and everything's just going to be great. It may not. Things may get better faster for some than others. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is Jesus is still giving us the invitation and he's saying you need to come to me and you need to give me this because you were not created and you were not designed to bear the weight of this you need to bring that to me because only jesus can truly bear the weight of the world only jesus can do that but even in the midst and the face of all that you and i can still experience god's sustaining grace in our lives so that we are not crushed or driven to despair even in the midst of the things that we face whether it's heartbreak sorrow weight of heavy burdens we're carrying, he's saying that we can still experience God's sustaining grace in our lives and we will not be crushed or driven to despair. Psalm 68 verse 19, David says, blessed be the Lord. Day after day, he bears our burdens. God is our salvation. Selah. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2, Paul says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill 
the law of Christ. And so when we think about giving our burdens to Jesus, number one, giving our burdens and casting them on the Lord looks like that we literally are surrendering them to Jesus himself and and throwing them on him because he bears our burdens day after day. But there's a second component to burden bearing when we, we, when we come to Jesus and we, we cast our cares and our anxieties on him. There's a community aspect to that as well. When Paul says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. See, here's why the Christian life is not meant to be lived in isolation and why it really frustrates me when I see people in our culture today saying, well, you can be a Christian and you don't have to attend church. I really just, you know, I want to be like, there's so many things that go through my mind when I hear that. While, yes, that is sort of a little bit of truth in there, it's not really completely true either. It's kind of like Satan. He always likes, well, when he told Eve, he says, well, God knows in the day you take of the fruit, your eyes will be opened and you'll be just like God. Well, that was half truth. Their eyes would be opened. The problem was they were not going to be anything like God. And so it's kind of the same thing. And people try to justify They say that because, and a lot of times it's because they've had a hurtful and they've had a damaging experience with church. And so what happens is they say, well, I can can be a Christian without the church. Well, you can't be a very good one. You're going to be a defeated one. We need one another. We were created and wired to live in community. You were not created to bear your burden alone. You were not created to, to bear it even just between you and Jesus because we are called to community and we're to bear one another's burdens because that's part of what the church does. When the ch- one member of the body hurts, the other members are to hurt. When one member of the body is sorrowful, the other members are to be sorrowful and weep with that one member. When that one member rejoices, we are to rejoice with them because what happens to one part of the body affects the whole body. And if you don't believe me, go throw your back out and see how well that works out for the rest of your body. If you mess your back up, your whole body is messed up. So if one part of the church body is not functioning and is, is, is weighed down with a burden, it weighs the whole body down. And so I want to read this, this last verse as we wrap up. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. Paul says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. He comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. And I, and I close on that verse to say this. The burdens that you and I bear are not, and the things that we face are not just some random chance in the universe that happened to us. Okay, the things that you're dealing with today that you walked in here with, it is not some random thing that just happened to you as if, It was like, well, I just happen to be the unlucky person who drew this straw, and that's just kind of my lot in life. It's not random. There is nothing that we face, nothing that happens in our lives that is random at all. There is a plan and a purpose behind every single thing that happens in your life. God is in sovereign control over every little small detail of your life. And I think so many times we overlook that, and we think, well, God's not interested in what I'm dealing with. God's not interested in these little nitpicky details of my life, but I want you to know that even those little nitpicky details are under the sovereign control and direction of a God that is controlling it all. Nothing is random. Think about Joseph in Genesis. It seems really random that it just was like really kind of crappy luck that his brother's you know, shafted him and, 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 and did him dirty like they did. And we can look at it and say, man, that was just really terrible luck that he ended up not only in the pit, but then he ended up in Egypt. He ended up as a slave. Well, then we said, man, he really had some bad luck. He went from being a slave in Potiphar's house to being cast into the prison because of being falsely accused. But every single thing that Joseph went through in his life was to prepare him to be the deliverer that God was going to use him to be to save his family from the famine. God was preparing and orchestrating everything to get Joseph into the place and position that he needed to be in to be able to help bring salvation to his family so they didn't die in the famine. And so while things seemed extremely random in that moment, it wasn't random. And so Paul is saying, Everything that we're going through, everything that we face, every affliction, every burden that we bear, 
is so that you and I can minister to someone else and give them the comfort that we experienced from Jesus. That we can show them how to navigate what they're facing. Because guess what? All of us have a story of how we came to faith. All of us have a story of what God is doing in our lives and how God is ministering to our hearts. And your story looks different than my story. But God can use the brokenness and the hurt in your story to reach people that are going through the same brokenness and hurt. God can use the brokenness and hurt in my life to reach people that that are broken and hurt in the same ways that I experience. And so today, I want us to truly understand what it looks like and truly realize and live into what it looks like to cast our burdens onto Jesus and to lay lay those at his feet and surrender those to Jesus and say, God, I don't know why I'm bearing this burden. God, I don't know why I'm facing this, this affliction or this trial or this thing that's happening in my life, but I believe there's a purpose in it. And I don't know what that purpose is yet, but I believe that you're going to show me later on. And I'll just say this before I I finish to to give you a perfect example of of how this played out in my own life. You know, in 2007 and 2008, we came home from from the mission field. And we probably experienced a season of about a year that was probably one of the most hurtful times in our lives. And as I think about that time, I think about how hard it was and I think about how, how painful it was. And even thinking about it, you know, in 2022, like 14 or 15 years later, it's rough. But I look back on it now and I'm like, I know why I went through that. Because now I get it. I can help minister to someone who's dealing with being hurt by church. And I can minister to people who don't understand why people who say they're Christians do certain things. And I get that. And I don't know what you're dealing with today. I don't know what your burden is today. But I know God has a plan in our burdens and God has a plan in our afflictions. And I pray that today we will truly experience what it is like to surrender that to Jesus. And as he says, come unto me all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. And Jesus says, I will give you rest. And I can tell you that I have experienced from that day what true soul rest looks like in Jesus. Because even while, yes, when I think about that, it's hard to talk about. But I've got peace about it because I know had I not gone through that, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I wouldn't be leading a church plan. I wouldn't be serving as part of Hope Church because I would not be the same person without the pain and without the hurt and without the burdens that I carried. God wouldn't have me where he has me now. And God couldn't have done in my life the things that he's done because I wasn't ready to receive what God wanted to do. I was self-righteous. I was hard-headed and hard-hearted. And God had to break that. And so I don't know what you're dealing with, but I know that God doesn't want us to waste our hurt and God doesn't want us to waste our affliction and the burdens that we're bearing. God doesn't want us to waste those. And so I pray that today we will bring those to Jesus and lay those at his feet and surrender those to him today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we're so thankful that you are a God that invites us to bring the things that are weighing us down. You are a God that invites us to bring things that afflict us. You are a God that invites us to bring our deepest pain and our greatest hurt. And you invite us, God, to bring it and cast it at your feet and lay it upon you and to take your yoke upon us. Because God, you tell us that you give us a yoke that is easy to bear and a burden that is light. And so God, I pray today that whether we're here in person or we're watching online, God, that we will bring those burdens to you and we will lay them at your feet and we will take your yoke upon us and experience what true soul rest looks like in you. So God, I pray today, will you speak to our hearts? Whatever we brought into this place, whatever we're dealing with, wherever we are today, God, will you speak to our hearts and draw us to your heart? that we would cast that burden upon you. 
and we would truly experience life-changing, life-giving soul rest that can only be found in Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. I pray today we respond to God as he has spoken to our hearts. Let's all stand together and let's worship.